Gentlemen, you all have raised some important issues, and, and Dr. Strauss, Senator Cantwell, and I were just commenting that you kept looking at the two of us, Oregon and Washington, so we understand what, what the stakes are in terms of storm surges and tsunamis. And my judgment with respect to some of these key questions about rising sea levels also now factors in the fact that I went to Fukushima last week, about a week or so ago, and of course there they had the triple whammy. They had the earthquake, they had the tsunami, which destroyed most of the uh, sites backup, you know, generators for the plants, even one of their emergency uh, battery banks, and then we had the hydrogen explosions um, as well. Now, Dr. Strauss, you noted in your testimony something that I think really hasn't gotten a lot of debate, and it certainly should after Fukushima and with the latest evidence, and that is that a rising sea level raises the launch pad for storm surges and it is going to raise the launch pad for tsunamis as well. Now, what I'm thinking about on the basis of what I saw a little bit ago at Fukushima, Unit 4, you know, in, in particular, a particularly damaged one, which is the inventory of the, essentially, the hottest, you know, ma materials. You have another earthquake tsunami kind of rupture with these spent fuel you know, rods in these pools, the spent fuel rods are going to melt, they're going to catch fire. That's going to release a lot of radioactivity. And all of this is compounded by the testimony that you gave, essentially, this morning with respect to the rising sea level raising this you know, launch pad. So uh, I believe the, the question that I'd like to ask and maybe start with, uh, with you, Doc, Dr. Berry. We've got a lot of nuclear plants located along the coast all over the world because of the need for you know, cooling water. On the basis of these rising sea levels and also what was seen at Fukushima, what I've tried to outline just in a minute or so, is it your view that it's time for uh, us to do some rethinking with respect to the location of, of vulnerable plants, plants that uh, are near to catastrophic you know, flooding that was, for example, caused by a tsunami that Dr. Strauss all but stared down Senator Cantwell and I and kind of talking about. These are not abstract issues for us in the Pacific Northwest. These are very, very real. So what is your thinking with respect to that? Uh, that point, uh, uh, Dr. Berry. Florida has the, I think, unique distinction of having two nuclear power stations on barrier islands. And, and barrier islands are, by definition, fragile environments. Uh, there were good reasons to locate them there. But um, as a colleague of mine says, three feet of sea level rise would be a problem for Turkey Point, for example, that, that nuclear power station, because uh, Turkey Point uh, went, out of, went out of commission for a few hours with Hurricane Andrew and the storm surge associated with that, uh, three, three extra feet and with uh, a, a storm that was a longer duration. Uh, Hurricane Andrew was very fierce, but it went through very quickly. Uh, I, I, would, I would recommend very, very importantly that the NRC begin to look very closely at the implications of sea level rise on our nuclear and on our nuclear facilities and our other energy facilities that are near the coast. One last uh, question, if I might, for you, Dr. Strauss. Can you amplify a little bit on this question of the rising sea level serving as a launch pad? Because for us in the Pacific Northwest, that is going to be a very real issue. And I and I juxtapose what I saw at Unit 4, and, and these, as you know, these facilities are right next to the ocean. There's what amounts to a makeshift bag of rocks that constitutes a, a, a seawall, and it, it just takes your breath away at the thought of sort of what you've outlined in terms of rising sea levels, uh, tsunamis triggered by earth, earthquakes. I mean, give us a little bit more analysis of the implications of a... Uh, elevated launch pad and what that means in, in terms of trying to our, our think through public policies to deal with it. 
Thank you, Senator. Um, I lived in uh, Seattle for a couple of years in Portland for a summer. Maybe that's why I was directing my gaze. Um, let me start with something a little different quickly. Um, the Pacific Northwest uh, seems to get an enormous earthquake, magnitude about 9.0, every 300 to 500 years. The last one was in 1700. Uh, one thing that those earthquakes do, besides creating a, a lot of direct damage, is lower the elevation of the land, um, sometimes dramatically, very suddenly. Uh, the forecast would be for maybe a one or two meter drop uh, at the next 9.0 earthquake along portions of the coast. So while a lot of, er you know, a lot of areas in the uh, United States are slowly subsiding, that's not very much the case in the Pacific Northwest. In fact, parts are lifting up uh, slowly because of the tension between tectonic plates but the earthquake is when that tension relieves, the plate drops. So you could have places that are suddenly a meter lower, um, which is, is another way of ranging, raising the launch pad once you get past the damage from the quake. Uh, the other point is that all along the Pacific, um, sea level rise from climate change is making a big difference. Is, is along the Pacific, sea level rise is converting you know, century storms into decade storms or annual storms faster than any place else in the United States. And that's because, well, you don't have hurricanes. So the difference today between an, a one-year storm and a storm that happens only once in 100 years is relatively small. And because that difference is relatively small, a small amount of sea level rise converts uh, what's today a once-a-century storm into an annual storm fairly quickly. Now, if you have steep slopes, it may not be a great problem, but in flatter areas or where there are critical facilities, uh, it is. Uh, and so what all that means is that in, on the Pacific coast, you'll start to see water in places where it wasn't more quickly than in other places. My, 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 my time is up, but I want to thank you for, for your work and your scientific expertise. You know, Dr. Strauss, I think this is going to help provide a wake-up call for us to put in place policies to start dealing with this, and I thank you.